An empirical formula is the simplest whole number ratio of atoms in a compound. It cannot be reduced if it's an empirical formula. We're going to work through the example problem on your page. In this problem, they gave you percents. They can give you percents, grams, or moles. If they give you percents, just take away the percent signs. If they give you grams, then just write the grams. And if they give you moles, then you'll be able to skip this first step decimal form by the molar mass because basically we're just finding the moles of each compound. Then we divide each answer by the smallest number which in this case was 2.02. What you do to one you have to do to all of them so we divide all of them by 2.02 which gives us one, one, and two. You multiply if necessary to get all of them to a whole number. In this case it was not. So we have one chlorine, one carbon, and two hydrogens. Go ahead and try this one on your own and restart the video when you think you have it. So first we have to write out our elements. We have carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, and oxygen. We have 57.14% carbon, 6.16% hydrogen, 9.52% nitrogen, and 27.18% oxygen. Divide by molar mass, which is going to give us our moles. and try it around as little as possible in this step. So you need at least three sig figs, if not more. Divide by smallest, which in this case was 0.68. And that gives us 14, or sorry, seven, nine, one, and 2.5. Notice we didn't get whole numbers, so we have to multiply by some number to give us a whole number. So we have to multiply by 2 because 0.5 times 2 would give us a whole number. So we get 14, 18, 2, and 5. This one is a combustion empirical problem. They tell us that we have carbon, hydrogen, and nitrogen present. We're going to react it with oxygen, and so we get so much carbon dioxide and so much water. Anytime you burn it in oxygen or react with, with oxygen, we're going to have to follow these same steps. You first have to figure out how much of that carbon dioxide is carbon. So we're going to write our grams of CO2 set up our dimensional analysis table. Mass of CO2 has to go on bottom to cancel out and we're looking for mass of carbon. Carbon dioxide weighs 44 grams and 12 of that was due to carbon. So we multiply and divide and we get 0 .0447 grams of carbon. We're going to do the same thing with water but to find our hydrogen. So mass of water on bottom, and we're looking for our mass of hydrogen. For every 18 grams, two of that is hydrogen. So you get 0 0.0186. If you have a third element, they've got to give you the mass of the entire compound, which was 0.1156. So when you subtract our carbon and hydrogen from our original compound, which was 0.1156, that will give us our mass of the third element, in this case, nitrogen. Now it's exactly like the other two problems that we've been solving. We divide by our molar mass. Now 
Then we divide by the smallest, which was 0 0.003725. And that gives us whole numbers, so we're done. So the first part of the question said, well, how much carbon is produced? So we had 0 0.045 grams, which is what we got earlier. And our empirical was CH5N. The last type of empirical problem you can have is this one where they give you a molecular compound and want you to find the empirical. Notice that the N6O10 can be reduced. Empirical formulas cannot be reduced. So we just need to find out what this reduces down to. We can divide all of them by two, giving us N3O5. A molecular formula is the exact formula of a molecule. It's a multiple of the empirical. So you just divide the empirical's molar mass by the molar mass of the compound to find the multiple that the empirical is. N6O10 is the molecular formula. N3O5 was the empirical. Notice N6O10 is twice as big, so it would be twice as heavy. So in this one, they want you to calculate the molecular formula. They gave you the empirical formula and the molecular's molar mass. So first, you have to find the empirical formula's molar mass. Chlorine's 35.5, carbon 12, hydrogen 1, which gives us 49.5. The molecular over the empirical's mass should give you a whole number or something very close to a whole number. In this case, it's a 2. So we multiply our empirical by 2. So Cl2C2H4. Go ahead and try this one on your own. Restart the video when you think you have it. Here you're given phosphorus and oxygen. So you had to find your empirical. divided by molar mass, divide by smallest, and in this case we needed to multiply by 2. So our empirical is P2O5. Now we need our molecular formula. So remember the first thing you need to do is find the empirical formula's molar mass. Phosphorus is 31, oxygen is 16, so that gives us 142. So 283.88 over 142 gives us 2. So we multiply our empirical by 2, giving us P4O10. Go ahead and pause the video, restarting when you think you have this one. They didn't give you the empirical again, so we had to calculate it. 
We have phosphorus, nitrogen, and chlorine. Divide by molar mass. Divide by smallest. So the empirical is PNCl2. We need the molar mass of that, which is 116. 580 over 116 shouldn't have given you 5. So we need PNCl2 times 5, which is B.